Okay, so uh, this morning we are just uh, focusing on the text of the next exam, uh, the creation of a, of a survey, of a simple survey application. Um, I, uh, so I, I assume that uh, all of you already uh, checked the text. Uh, um, and uh, so I will focus uh, directly on, on the questions uh, that have been uh, asked uh, on the on the survey exam one survey channel on Slack, uh, so that we may give uh, answers to, to each of them and uh, uh, and, and try to, to discuss about the text. Uh, and uh, what what we said is that uh, we will pre prepare a, a final version of the text uh, after this uh, this chat, uh, so that some uh, clarifications will be also put into the into into the text of the exam. Okay. Um, basically, uh, we have this uh, uh, this application where uh, some some administrators are able to create uh, uh, questionnaires, surveys, and uh, uh, anybody can reply. Basically, so the, uh, this notion of a of a user is basically not uh, uh, um, is not registered anywhere, but means every uh, anonymous user uh, can respond to the survey. So uh, there's a bit of confusion towards the end uh, when it talks about uh, uh, creating the users. Uh, we will come because there's also one of the questions on this. Uh, um, it's actually it's much simpler means uh, at least uh, two different responses by by different people maybe. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, maybe maybe we, we may go through the questions. I prepared. I did a cut and paste of the questions into. Uh, a Google document that I will share the link to you uh, afterwards. So let me see where's the zoom. Okay, here under the 50 more. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe I'm all, so can you read it? 250. No, it doesn't like. Okay, something like that. Okay, just tell me whether you can read the text or not. Um, okay, so uh, first I, I want to give some general recommendations, hmm? uh, some meta answers, so answers to questions you didn't ask. <laughs> uh, and they are basically try to, to keep it simple, not to... Uh, try to avoid complexity, try to avoid uh, doing extremely convoluted uh, solutions and so on. Okay, If possible, try to, to find a, a solution which is uh, simple to implement and simple to, uh, to evaluate and simple to execute. Mm -hmm. um, second is uh, the general rule. If something is not explicitly required in the text, uh, then you are not required to implement it. Okay, So even if something would be a good idea, uh, but it's not requested in the text, uh, you may decide to implement it or not, uh, but you are not required. So there will not be any penalty if you don't do something which is not requested. Of course, it means obvious, but uh, uh, in many times uh, the student thinks that the teachers are very nasty and they're trying to uh, find some spots uh, where they will, uh, you know, um, reduce your score because you didn't do something. No, okay, there's no there's not a hidden trick here, okay? Um, we try to also omit from the text uh, something that would be reasonable to have for reducing the complexity and the length of the work, okay? Um, if something can be done in different ways, uh, you may choose uh, the way you prefer. So. There is not uh, uh, some preferred way of doing something or something that, okay, the professor likes it more in this way or that way. No, there's nothing, nothing like that. Uh, you have some requirements. You can choose your project, how to implement them in your project. You make your choices. As long as these choices are, are reasonable, are compatible with the technology, with the frameworks, uh, they, are, uh, they are acceptable. Okay? Um, uh, normally, mm, I would suggest uh, uh, go for the simplest one if you can, okay? Simplest to you. Mm. And uh, remember that we have some exam rules uh, published uh, on, the, uh, on the website here that uh, you should read. 
I try to summarize them in the, one of the last uh, lectures, but in the exam section here, where we have the text of the exam, and we also will have the links for for this video chat and the and the GitHub document, uh, sorry, the Google Drive document. At the end, we have a long section about exam rules. Okay, so uh, try try to to read them because these are the, the formal uh, ones. Um, I will also uh, highlight. Uh, this paragraph here, okay, that's saying that since the exam is essentially the design of an, of an application with generic specifications, it is not acceptable that the submitted solutions are too similar among them, okay? Uh, because there was one, one recurring question saying, uh, okay, we worked in group during the big labs, uh, can we work in groups also during the exam, okay? Uh, the, the response is here. You can work in group, of course, but each of you has to submit their own project. There cannot be it cannot be the same project uh, submitted uh, four times, okay? Uh, and uh, so try to work together, share your ideas, but then everybody has their own project, uh, and so there will be uh, necessarily some differences, differences in, in the presentation, in layout, in the components. Uh, Maybe some problems you will solve them in the same way because you work together and you find the solution and you found a solution together. Okay, but uh, in, in generally the projects should be different, should be sorry, uh, the work of, of a single person. Okay, so try not to submit identical projects uh, um, to your um, from different people. Okay. Um, of course, there's a degree of uh, of, of freedom. Let's say, what is excessively similar? Okay, uh, I, I don't count the line of, lines of code, but my message to you is: uh, everybody works on the project. The project is the same, so maybe the, you will have common problems. You can work together uh, for uh, for solving these common projects, but then everybody will implement that in their own project. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's go to the questions. Uh, that they found on Slack. I already tried to uh, draft a, a very well, one sentence reply to each of them, and uh, so we may comment them together now. Uh, the single, the first one is uh, if there is a minimum and maximum number of possible allowed answers for a single closed uh, um, question. So it's. Um, uh, you know that you can create a, a question with a, um, a multiple choice question and uh, uh, how many possible answers can you give uh, uh, in the definition of the of the question um, the text doesn't specify anything so theoretically one could create one question with a uh, 200 uh, possible answers and then, of course, you can set the minimum and maximum number of actions that may be selected by the user, but it's a totally different topic. Uh, if you want, uh, you may assume a maximum number, maybe a round of 10 answers or so on, or you may just leave it free for, uh, say, um, a free number of, um, of answers. So if you find it, that maybe it will be easier to implement the database, probably, I don't know, uh, you can put a limit on this, okay? But the limit should not be three or four. It should be at least 10. Uh, the, the idea is that we don't want you to make uh, you know, special cases, uh, one, two, three, four, many uh, chains of ifs uh, or so on, try to find a solution that works uh, flexibly. Then if for layout reasons or for database organization reasons, uh, you want to limit the maximum number, you can do that. But your solution should be general enough for add and remove uh, uh, a new question. Um, second, uh, can an administrator create a survey and not publish it immediately? Should we have a list of unpublished survey? Uh, uh, no, the idea here, here is that uh, the administrator will prepare a survey and will publish it. If it, he doesn't publish it, the, the, the survey is lost forever. Okay, so there is no uh, survey which is, is partially completed uh, or is saved but not published and so on okay so either a survey doesn't exist or it's uh, um, it's published hmm? uh, this because we don't have the functionality for editing a survey 
okay you could save a survey in general and then edit it and then publish it later uh, we didn't want to put too much context in this exam so we don't have the editing part of the survey you see the survey can be created published uh, uh, and so on but not uh, uh, you cannot edit a, 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 a survey that has already been uh, created mm -hmm. so as a consequence uh, there is no unpublished survey concept um, can an administrator create an empty survey without questions uh, no uh, at least one question is necessary we will clarify that in the text um, we will uh, write it but at least one question is, is required uh, for a survey to be published so you cannot uh, publish a survey with zero questions hmm? good good question uh, no, uh, question number four is the same as number two well, if i've been logged out without publishing the survey it, the survey is lost hmm? number, uh, question number five uh, how the user should see the specification of the question with minimum maximum words like option okay uh, so this question is about how to visualize the questions uh, for the user and i would add also for the administrator this is up to you okay this is free, it's not specified. So if you want to have some special icons to see that the question is uh, mandatory or where or how you put the minimum and maximum values, uh, you, you design your own component uh, uh, how you, um, the way you want, okay? The text only requires, uh, just go back to the text, uh, the text requires that uh, um, each question will clearly show its validity constraints. So how do you show them? It's part of your design. Hmm? They just must be clearly shown in a way that you will design. Uh, then, number six, uh, what is the best way of storing the question in the database? Different tables for closing our question, keeping them in the same table and so on. So this is a real, um, not, not problem, it's a real issue. So this is uh, a... Uh, uh, the design of database may be done in different ways okay one way is to go let's say uh, with fully normalized uh, uh, database tables so you have several tables with relationships uh, and one table for each answers and so on um, since you have two, two types of questions the normal form will tell you that you have uh, uh, two tables uh, and with a with a um, with a weak foreign key basically for linking them or uh, you may try to make it simpler one one table with many columns so some columns will only be used uh, on uh, free text questions and the other column will only be used uh, on um, on multiple choice questions if that's also a possibility or um, there's also other possibility like uh, uh, you have maybe a, a json description of a question not the answers we are talking about the questions um and in, you just store the json into the database so that you can recreate the object with all the properties uh, from json in that case the information about the question will be opaque will be uh, say uh, black boxed uh, for the database uh, but you have a representation which is may, may have um, some internal complexity um inside the inside database and don't come you don't will want will not complicate too much the database so uh, try to evaluate the different possibilities a any possibility is okay for us so, okay there are no specific requirements about how you store data in the database hmm? okay uh, point seven uh, is it required to create a model form for inserting the name of the users and so on blah 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 there is no requirement about using a model or not using a model okay the text only requires uh, it must in insert their name how do you insert that it's uh, it's up to you it's up to your design okay there is no specific requirement about using a model or using uh, a form or whatever hmm? um, the navigation question number eight uh, navigating forward and backward across the responses of other users uh, in this part uh, uh, the text is quite clear uh, I'll, uh, while selecting one of these surveys uh, uh, the, we allow navigation through the answer uh, navigating forward and backward across the responses of other users okay so 
there is no direct selection mechanism go to user number ABCD or number 27 uh, we have we need to have a, a um, one page at a time navigation so I click on the here I choose one survey we, we see the title and number of respondents okay the question uh, survey number uh, title ABCD 27 responses I click on the title I click or select or push a button whatever or click on an icon depends on your layout okay I select this uh, survey and I will see the one page with the response of the first user and then I have a mechanism for moving to the question of the second user of the third one on the fourth one and so on Okay, so I should have an incremental way of going of moving forward and backward through the list uh, of, uh, of questions. You can do that with a couple of buttons. You can do that with by swiping, by drag and drop, or by a navigation bar at the bottom, whatever. Okay, but uh, there should be mechanism for going to the next or to the previous response. Uh, at least, if you want to add additional mechanisms uh, in addition to this sequential forward and backward you can do that but it's not required so they will not, you will not have extra points or whatever um, so this should be sequential point nine uh, how the user interface is your experience of changing the order of the questions should be or well, you can uh, have very many possibilities uh, the simplest one is having a up button and a, and a down button so that uh, you have a list of questions, you, you click on up uh, and you swap uh, each question with the previous, uh, uh, the given question with the previous one, and so on. So two arrow buttons uh, are, um, uh, are um, the simplest way of, um, of doing that. Uh, point 10, uh, what we should log into the console, uh, ideally nothing, okay? So the console, try to keep it clean. If you have a lot of console.log for debug purposes, try to remove them so that the console will only show real uh, errors or mistakes uh, or exceptions or uh, something like that. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I will come to the, to the, to the chat later. Let me just finish uh, the, the first... Uh, the first uh, round okay so try to keep the console as clean as possible uh, 11 can we adopt a drag and drop approach to share the or change the order of the questions yes of course okay uh, the text requires you to uh, modify the order of the inserted questions how you choose to modify it first we mentioned about up and down buttons but you see there's not button here it's a, an action this action could be a button could be a link could be a, a drag and drop action uh, whatever so how you implement this action is uh, is free for you um, 12 uh, should we check the user uniqueness before survey submission no no usernames are not required to be unique and there's no guarantee that they will be unique they're just an, inf an extra information that we store along alongside with the with the answer with the reply okay so there is no no you can you 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 don't have to enforce uniqueness but at the same time you cannot rely on uniqueness of the names uh, does the list of text for the possible answer means multiple choice questions uh, yeah just imagine you have a question uh, how do you feel today? And then you have a sev several okay answers, like here. Uh, was, the, was the text? Uh, close answer. A question title. How do you feel today? And the list of possible answers. So I'm feeling fine, not so well, uh, exceptional, and so on. And all of these strings of text that will be the possible answers for the user are the what we what I call the uh, the list of text for the possible answers okay then they can be single choice or multiple choice depending on the minimum and maximum constraints that you set on the question um, the user is not registered in the database then what uh, is a user hmm? uh, the user is nothing it's just uh, a, a label which is not unique uh, to an answer 
so we will have to rephrase uh, I, I i agree because we simplified it uh, and some 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 remnants of the previous versions are still in the text uh, um, we will simplify the text uh, to make it clear that uh, there is no notion of a user okay in the system we have the notion of the administrator of the survey and of the response to the survey so what we are calling user actually is uh, the response information about responses they may come from from general users okay uh, so the user is just the name associated with the answer so the real concept is the answer no other information is used to discern users uh, different users um, 15 can we use the sql property auto increment for the ids uh, yes of course i don't see why not okay it's a normal feature of the database so if you want to use it uh, of course, you are free to use it. OK, so that was the, the question that I prepared uh, yesterday. I see that new ones are, are, are coming, so let's go to them. But before, I want to uh, browse what is in the chat. Uh, and there was also, OK, no, there was a, um, a raised hand, but I don't, I don't see it anymore. So uh, maybe he was answered. Um, The, the answer so on the chat uh, is Alexandru who is asking uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, tab navigation, for example, browser navigation and so on, uh, for the answers. The text only tells you that uh, the navigation through the answer should be uh, sequential here. Uh, page allows navigation across the responses of other users i would uh, we will correct it as across all responses hmm? uh, and we will delete the term users um, but how do you implement this navigation you are free to do that just remember that maybe maybe you may have a large number of uh, of, of responses so try to find a mechanism that doesn't limit the number of responses hmm. um, uh okay can antonio can an old survey be deleted uh, no there is no is, there's no functionality requested for this action so the answer is no if you want to add this, this functionality you may add that but it's not required here in the text um marco when i might pick a survey a survey enter a name provide some answers and they when i'm redirected to the main page can i do this again without any mechanism yes yes there is a you can uh, uh, respond to the same survey 17 times in a row with the same name with different names there's no protect protection about that hmm? um, it's not the ideal uh, it's not an application you, you can sell tomorrow because it uh, has some okay some flows but uh, to make it simpler uh, I, we want it to com we want you to complete the project in 20 days not 20 months hmm? um, the first page of the app we should add an option that allows you to enter as a user or administrator uh, basically only as an of course you, you must provide the login functionality okay uh, there's no specification about how the home page will look like but of course you should provide the functionality for login for becoming an administrator uh, it's uh, mentioned here uh, once authenticated the administrator may so the administrator must authenticate you must provide the ways for for, for an, administrator, an administrator to log in to authenticate uh, him or herself um, there is no authentication for users right? only for so if you are if you want to fill a survey you just do that um, Ricardo, when a user is compiling the survey, can he validate one question at a time? Yes, of course. Uh, maybe it's better to validate uh, each question separately from the others. Uh, but at the end, uh, the only real requirement is that the response can only be submitted if it check if it fulfills all the validations. If you do everything at the end, or if you do everything incrementally, it's a uh, it's your choice. I would prefer doing that incrementally, but it's not a requirement. Hmm. The number of responding users uh, is visible to everyone or just the administrator. The number of responding users is only visible here. View the result of their publishing published surveys, where the administrator can view the list of surveys and the number of respondents. So every administrator will only see 
his own uh, users, hmm? his own number of responses. Uh, what does the administrator see after the authentication? It's here. You can create a new survey or view the results. So after authentication, you can you should offer these two possibilities to the administrator. How you organize them in the page is not my business. Hmm? Um, can see other main surveys? No, no, no. Just every every administrator can only see their own. Okay, uh, published by this administrator. Okay, I, everything should be in the text. Um, Ricardo, yes, you are validating and blocking it with a possibility. Mm, yes. Uh, at Abai, you told that there's no need to have unpublished surveys, but they can implement it in that way. First at the title, then it will appear. So you can, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can implement everything you want uh, if you want to do something more than is requested here. So if, if you find that you prefer to have a, the state of a survey which is saved but not published, you can do that as long as these functionalities are met. Okay? Uh, it's your own choice, it's your own risk. So if you do something extra, you will spend more time, of course. You, get, you will have a nicer project, but the maximum uh, number of points uh, is still the same. It doesn't change. So I, I'm not going to give extra points if you do something outside the specification. And if you do something outside, just check that what is actually required in the text is really met. Hmm? Uh, the sign up for the new administrator is not required. No, uh, we also have we are, we will also publish uh, or we already published. I don't remember. Yeah, here. Sorry, there's a, a FAQ document. FAQ over the exam rules. Uh, there's another document that, can, that is generic. We will put it here because it's valid for all the all the different exams, all the different exam calls, uh, where there are some general rules uh, and we in which uh, this, uh, uh, so have a look also at this document. These are general questions that uh, uh, can uh, are raised basically at, at every exam. Um, so the sign up or registration of new users is never required, is never required, okay? So just you have to enter the users by hand into the database. There's no way of uh, then if for your own sake, you want to have a simple form for registering a new user, you can do that, but it's not uh, will not be checked. Hmm? Um, they should see the number of responded users and not the answer themselves. Uh, the administrator cannot check the submitted surveys in full. No, the answers will be visible after you click on the name. I'm responding to Fabrizio from the chat. Um, here we are saying that uh, I, the administrator will view the results. We have a first page, let's call it page, maybe it's only a part of the page depending on how you want to implement it, but let's call it page in which we have the list of the published surveys with the number. Then you click on one of them and you see all the answers one by one. Of that uh, uh, of that survey of that specific survey. Um, then uh, uh, Alberto, length of closed answers limited to 200 characters. Uh, ah, you may set a limit. You means uh, yeah, we didn't think about uh, setting a limit there. So the length of this text for the possible answer. Yes, you usually wouldn't want a very long text, but there's no, yeah, if you want to set a limit, you may, but there's no special requirement for that. Geben, hmm? uh, uh, is there a multiple administrator, a user should know who made the survey? No, the administrator can only see his own surveys. He doesn't care if there are other administrators, what they do. Administrator number, uh, administrator A cannot see the surveys for administrator B. Hmm. Um, about the results for a single question, is it possible to show the list of pairs users answer? Uh, if you do it, this as an extra, Carmine, if you do this as an extra functionality, you can do that, but the text will require to see uh, the 
this one. The page will show the name of the user followed by all given responses by this user. So there should be a page where you have the full responses of a user. Then if you want to have another view, like uh, for this question, what, what were the, the answers for different users? It, it may be done, of course, but it's something extra. Hmm? Um, so the visualization of the question should be done one by one. No, no, I never said that. Uh, the visualization of the answers to the different uh, surveys, one full answers, by one full answers is made of several questions. Okay, so they will be one by one by the administrator. Uh, Angelo, I understand your question to be about uh, um, the users. The users may proceed to giving answers, but these giving answers may be one by one or all of them in the same page. This is your, your choice. Hmm? There's no specific requirement about the order. The only real requirement is that uh, you, you constrain the submission for, by the um, uh, by the validity of the of all the constraints. Okay, so let's go back to also some of the questions uh, that uh, are from from Slack. Uh, that I will uh, I will save this chat and also the Slack. I will uh, let's say um, increase this document. So now there are 15 questions. I will copy them and try to give one short answer for for each of them. Um, uh, Gabin, uh, the close question, no, cannot have a text error. There is no other to fill in the, the, the field. It's only selecting from the, uh, the available choices. Uh, Pietro, could you repeat it? We need an option in the first page to select admin or user. Uh, in the front page, you may choose a survey to fill. And in that case, you will be able to user or you may log in. And in that case, uh, you have the administrator page where you can create uh, new surveys or see the results of the previous ones. Um, Lorenzo, can we decide to store also users in database? Uh, yes, but no. Uh, the username is not unique. So if you can store, you will store this information. Uh, of course, because you need to store the information about the name of the user in the response, but uh, um, it should not be a login or a user. Okay, so uh, there may be different users, real users, different persons that use the same name. Hmm? So you cannot use a mechanism, uh, that as a mechanism for identification. Hmm? Uh, okay, so. Um, let me go to the to the Slack questions. Uh, so the first one is from Maria Luisa. Uh, how should we manage the user admin distinction? Uh, okay, again, uh, what what we said, uh, we don't need uh, to see a user doesn't exist. So I imagine a front page where you can have the list of open questions, uh, question uh, surveys, sorry, and you can choose one of them and start replying. Or you can log in and then go to the administrator functionality. This is just my imagination. You can organize that in any way you want. Okay. There's no choice user or administrator. If you log in, you are an administrator. If you don't, you are a normal user. Vincenzo, a survey could contain both types of questions closed and open. Yes, of course. Each survey contains a list of questions. Each question may be open or closed. Uh, if a user reloads the page when filling out a survey, what should happen? There's no requirements about that. So the only in the general rules in the uh, FAQ that you see find here, we wrote that uh, um, you are um, we will check the application only by using the internal navigation features. Okay, so we will click on links, uh, select buttons, uh, enter forms, and so on inside the application. We will not try to reload some page or enter some uh, some URL by hand. Okay, so you don't need to implement any protection uh, for those kind of navigations which are outside the application. 
in a real application you would and we saw that we need to reconstruct the state and so on but we we don't require you to um, let's say to be consistent when the user reloads uh, uh, the, um, the a page hmm? and uh, the name of the user might be inserted only one time at the launch of the app uh, no the, na the name of the user can, should be inserted at the beginning of every response okay the user may choose one of their surveys and start responding to it initially so at the initial at the beginning of the response it will enter the name if the same user will end will once want to respond to a second survey it will enter a name again at the beginning of the second answer okay so at every time i start a response i have a, 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 a text input to fill with my with the name i want to be recorded for that answer um gabriel about the uniqueness of usernames uh, could be an issue to retrieve the answers of the same survey of the user which had the same username uh, no it's not an issue you of course internally into your database uh, you will have answer number one number two number three if uh, answer number two and number 17 happen to have the same name well that's not a problem you should, <laughs> your application should be able to handle that Okay, so the identification of the answer will not be done by the name of the user, but will be done by some ID that you guarantee that will be unique, which is not the username. Hmm? Not, not, not the username, it's not the name of the user, so there's no username concept in this application. Um, we are allowed to ask questions in this Slack channel, or should we feel or no uh, when it comes to... Okay, uh, this this channel, exam one survey, is for the exam. So for every question you have about the exam, ask this in this channel, and we can give you support uh, on, on this channel for questions concerning to the exam. Okay, so this channel is now for the discussion, for... Uh, raising the question and giving the, 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 the feedback, but also during the whole uh, um, the whole 20 days, you may ask, still, it's a continuous process. You may ask a general question about the text and we will reply by, uh, by also replying here in this document where everything will be published, but we can also uh, give a, a limited form of advice. Of course, we cannot solve uh, the exam for you, but uh, this is the place, uh, this uh, channel is the place to ask questions. Um, Alessandro, if a user completes a survey and, and they submit it, can they make the same survey again as a user? Of course, yes, you can choose the, 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 the user is anonymous, so it can always repeat the same action because it could be, a, a, there's no, you have no mechanism to recognize that it is the same user that will do it uh, again. Hmm? So you, I, I can feel the same uh, questionnaire. 10 times in a row with the same name or with different names. Hmm? I don't know why this makes it, you so uncomfortable, the fact that the usernames are not the real users. Okay, it's just uh, a, a public pl place where you can go and fill in a questionnaire. Um, okay, when I show the answer, do I have to show also the name of the users? Yes, of course. It's part of the uh, it's also written here, the page will show the name of the user follow it, followed by all given responses. So the name of the user we need, need to be shown in the responses. Can the administrator modify the questions? Uh, it can modify the questions if you want to implement it before submission. Okay, but after pub uh, before uh, publication. After the publication, you cannot modify anything uh, anymore. Um, so you can decide to delete one question and modify the order but you can modify the text of oh, sorry. modifying the text of a question is not uh, required okay uh, we'll, we have a limited form of editing creating a new question modifying the order deleting these are the three actions there is no requirement for being able to modify the text of a question maybe if you find it easy maybe creating and editing are not so different so maybe you can implement that uh, but it's not specifically required Okay, basically in this case, if you mistype something, you have to delete the question and create another one. But if you want to implement a modification, you can, but it's not required. Um, should we pay particular attention to the responsiveness of the web app on smaller screen? No, there's no requirement about this. So 
maybe you don't make it uh, you know don't, don't count the pixel don't make a fixed layout uh, because you no know, it's not a good practice today but uh, we are not going to check the responsiveness with different uh, screen sizes so you don't you don't have to care about that this is a desktop application not a mobile application so you to imagine um, a normal desktop uh, um, interface can an administrator answer a survey or should uh, should he log out uh, Mm, I think both ways are acceptable. So you being logged in, you can respond to a, sur a survey. Yes, why not? But if you want to ensure that only anonymous people can respond to the survey, you can also, um, let's say, uh, require that the user logs out, uh, the, admin, the admin logs out before responding. I think both ways are acceptable. There's no specific requirement in the text about this. Uh, can I log in an administrator, go to the home page and respond to the, to an other administrator survey as well as well, this is the same question basically, or like, no, it's a different question, but the answer is the same. Okay. It's up to you. Of course, if I am a normal user, I can respond to anybody's, uh, uh surveys, including my own, because I'm not, uh, uh, identified, um, whether I can do the same operation while still being logged in, it's your choice. I don't, I don't think any strong reason why to say yes or not. Carlo, is there any delete or modify feature? The only delete is about deleting a question or modifying the order of the question. So these, these are the only two require, required features about editing and modifications uh, as, as the minimum functionality. So nothing, basically you cannot delete a, a survey from the list and so on. Okay, they are not required. Um, why is that? Uh, Yes, sir. After the admin publishes a survey, the survey is saved in read in read mode or not? Even when no responses are, what does the mean see? Uh, so, when the admin publishes a survey, that survey becomes, uh, let's say, um, available immediately to the users uh, for giving responses. Okay. The administrator clicks uh, on publish and uh, the survey goes live live immediately. So people may start uh, entering responses. Of course, there will be a state in which uh, the uh, survey is published, but there's no answers yet. Okay, no problem. So in this list of, of, um, of number of responded users, it will be zero. And probably you will not be able to select that. Um, if the user has username user and then another user uses the same username, should we count it as a single user? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the answer is no. They should. You should count the number. Of, I will. I will change this part of the text. I will write uh, the number of responses to be clearer. The number of responses may. I don't know whether they are from the same user or from different users. So it's not the number of distinct names, but it's the number of actual responses that you have, um, that some user gave you. Hmm? So this will be corrected. Uh, should we check the uniqueness of the survey title and the, the question in the survey? I don't see any need to do that. No. Uh, the general rule is, if it's not written in the text, uh, you are not required to do that, okay? Uh, will uh, the user see a page of surveys with not regards about the administrator who created them? Yes, yes. So the the user may choose one of the published surveys. The text says so. There is no filtering or uh, selection by the type of administrator who published them. The user will see all the published surveys. Uh, the user. The administrator can only see their own uh, their own surveys published by themselves. Okay, in the in the part where you see the the the, the answers. Um, Carlo, after insertion in database, we are not able to modify or delete any information in any way. Is it right about the, you will not be you are not required to modify in any way the the, the content of the survey? Of course, you you will add the answers to that. Okay, but the surveys itself, the questions are 
immutable after you publish the survey. The survey can no longer be modified. Hmm? I know you're not comfortable with that, but I, again, we wanted to limit, it, limit the number of functionality we give you. Um, Lorenzo, the user sensor should be saved individually. Uh, in answer to the question, uh, then when you save information into database, uh, it's your choice. You can save information as it's entered, or you can save information only when the user confirms uh, and uh, submit the response. There's no specification about this. Of course, the only requirement is that when the user completes the uh, the submission it, it will be saved and uh, uh, if the user if the validation constraints are not satisfied uh, uh, the response should not be recorded okay so even if, if you say one question and one response at a time and then the last one is not valid uh, that the whole response is not should not be considered valid hmm? uh, Francesco, is there the possibility to search for a specific published survey by typing the title? Is not required. We are we are just talking about uh, choose one of the published surveys. So the simplest way to implement this is uh, making a list of them and making them selectable. If you want to do something extra fancy, you can do that, but it's extra. Um, Available about uh, the authentication, whether Bcrypt is uh, necessary, yes, of course. Uh, password, uh, now this is a, a law of God, uh, something my, um, very, very above our heads. Uh, passwords are never stored in clear. Full stop. Okay, so that will uh, this will apply always. Um, Julio, if unrequired features are implemented such as the ability of edit, to edit a question or make the error responsible, this is taken into account for the final grade? No, not in your favor, at least. Uh, if you do something extra, so we will have a, a grading grid, basically. You say, okay, if this, this, is, this functionality will be one point, this functionality will be two points, and something like that. Something internally. I will not share these numbers with you. Uh, but internally, say for ease of, of grading, we'll have a, a grid like this. Um, if you do something extra, they, it will not give extra points. But if you implement something extra and do it wrong, so they may mm, insert some bugs or something doesn't work, uh, then of course we will decrease the score because uh, there will be some errors in, in the application. Okay, so uh, you know it's, mm, it, it may seem strange, but actually these are the requirements. Uh, stick to stick with them. Okay. If you want to do something extra because it's nicer, you are welcome to do that. I will not do. I will not give you extra points. Uh, and uh, if you are, uh, if you make some mistakes, you may lose some points. I don't want to be a terrorist, okay? But uh, um, really, uh, you don't. You don't get to choose what to implement. Uh, you have to implement what is in the specification. Um, Lorenzo, in the text is written that a survey is submitted or should the user submit a full survey? Or should we submit single answers? No, the submission is the of the full survey. Okay, so the survey is uh, uh, submitted in full when all the answers are given depending on the constraints. So there is no partial submission. Uh, the thing I was saying before is that if you want to store in the database one question at a time when you fill, then it's your it's an internal mechanism of, of, of synchronization of the state. We are not, uh, uh, different solutions are, are possible. Um, but from the functional point of view, either the survey is uh, valid with all the constraints valid and um, submitted or it is not. Okay. So in many cases, if, if the survey is not complete, is not cor correctly submitted, then it will it must not appear in the list of, of responses. Um, 
as for the managing a huge pile of answers not downloading all at once also the surveys could be numerous should we manage a dynamic loading of them too um, so if you have a, a list of titles even if it is if you have a hundred titles or a thousand titles it's not a problem downloading a thousand strings okay uh, when we see the answers uh, probably it would be better to load them one by one when you move forward and back also at that point you load the information you need uh, because you don't want to maybe to load all the information about all the answers uh, all together at the beginning mm -hmm. um, we don't have any requirement about that huh? but uh, it to me it seems reasonable that the list of all the surveys uh, can be loaded at once uh, but the answers could be loaded one by one while the user is navigating back and forth hmm? but it's not a requirement hmm? does the user see the name of the admin curator is not a requirement if you want to show it but otherwise it's not required we can use mongodb no uh, unfortunately no uh, for for this, uh, basically the, the uniformity of correction uh, I understand that uh, the, 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 um, the diversity of the data that you need to be to store it's uh, a bit difficult uh, to or a bit, bit difficult uh, it's not very well suited for uh, a relational databases uh, that's why one of the idea uh, here was uh, to store uh, some JSON into a column and say okay these are the questions I, I store that as a string uh, and they will part the JSON when you do, do that uh, just remember that uh, uh, we don't ask for any editing functionality uh, that will be what well, we become very much uh, much more, more much more complex so just only storing a complete survey and then retrieving and parsing it but uh, no the um, we, we we want uh, the database to be on sqlite hmm, for uniformity basically if the user lost the page without filling the whole survey, answers are lost. Yes. Uh, Gabriele, I cannot understand the answer for the user unique question. question. Uh, two different users did a survey with the same username. I am looking for a database the username answer to a specific question. Now can you tell me which answer is the first and which is the second? Uh, it just... Uh, Okay, uh, re forget about username. Huh? Basically, there's no username here. Uh, the user must not authenticate to the website. The user may choose to respond. And then it will insert a name into the response. That's it. There will be response number one, two, three, four. Hmm? Uh, these different responses uh, just have a label, okay? If I like, if you ask you, what is your favorite uh, soccer team? Okay, so there will be a lot of people that will write Juventus, and a lot of people will say the Torino and whatever. If these labels are identical, why is it a problem? Okay, they're not going to identify the user. There's just a label that mark up uh, an answer, just a comment. So you will have to ensure that the response is uniquely identified inside your database. This unique identification is not the name of the user. Okay. Um, Alberto, when a user compiles and sends a survey, it cannot retrieve that survey. No, it cannot. Hmm? Uh, it will not be able to see what uh, he just submitted. Only the administrator will able we will be able to see the responses among the responses of, uh, of all the other users. So the users are like in Google form where just see a number on the top and then they see, well, well, if you see a number, if you show the name, then it's a detail about the user interface. Huh? Uh, but uh, for sure the users are not uh, do, don't have any form of identification it's just a nickname which is not checked against uniqueness it's not checked about uh, against any database so if you want to show the number if you want to show answer number one by 
John, you can show that. We don't see nothing against. You must show it. Okay, basically. Uh, the show the name of the user, which is not the username. Is it just the name that the, that user entered when they filled the response? Okay, so I see that some further questions are still coming. Uh, after the user submits a survey, Andrea is asking, and comes back to the list of surveys not yet submitted, you should not be able to press again the button field survey for the, no, it, it may do that. There's no mechanism for preventing a user to fill twice in a row the same survey. You don't have to think any mechanism about for for uh, say preventing him to to do that. So if he wants, he, he, the user can do that. Can fill one survey and immediately after fill again the same survey by entering the same name or by entering different names. It's it's actually very simple. Okay. You have a lot. Of, you had a lot of teachers in the past that taught you to think in a very, uh, say, complex way. You're not always trying to find the complexity the corners or so on. No, yeah, that's just, it's just simple. Okay, everybody can go there, click, and fill it in. You just have to have to enter a string, a courtesy string at the beginning. Nothing more. If you want to do it twice, you can do it twice. Hmm? Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, the input for entering the username, which is not a username, or yes, uh, about the administrator, uh, can be the same form of the question. Uh, yeah, it can be in the same page. Depends on how you organize. Okay, you can have all the answers in one page, so the, user, the name and then all the questions to be filled and then the submit button at the bottom. Or you may have several stages so you, if you want to organize it in different pages. Uh, there is no requirement about this. You can choose the solution that is uh, simpler for you. Is there a specific order for the answer visualization? No, I would do that by, let's say, insertion order. So by the first one uh, where I the, uh, but there's no specific requirement for that. Hmm? Well, for the sorting of the responses uh, uh, in the visualization of, um, of the responses for a single survey. Andrea, uh, it will be counted as a new response if it submits again? Yes. What it means is that we don't have any way and we don't want to, to do any mechanism for, for trying to understand if the two answers are from the same person or not. They are just two different answers for us. Can the username be empty? I would say no. Okay. Uh, he, he must insert their name, okay? So an empty is not uh, something that is really inserted. Maria Luisa, uh, accept invitation GitHub, okay, about the procedure, accept invitation GitHub Classroom and correctly associate your name with the, uh, um, so uh, when you accept something on GitHub Classroom, the first time you do that, uh, it will show you the list of all the names of the students in the course and you have to pick one okay if you already did that for the big labs then it's already done huh? you will uh, uh, see uh, that uh, uh, i don't know what you see because i don't see the i, I don't know the, the student side of uh, github classroom but uh, um, i I published in the general channel yesterday a list of uh, GitHub usernames uh, that were not associated uh, uh, correctly uh, with the student ID. So if your username is not in that list, uh, in the general channel in, on Slack, uh, then you're OK. Hmm? Uh, if you did the big labs uh, correctly, you already have your username associated, so you're, you don't have to do anything more. Yeah, you already forgot about what you did uh, two months ago. Which is good. Uh, 
okay so basically i will correct this tag i will uh, okay uh, add uh, some new clarification some answers to this uh, document uh, and i will show you the link uh, for that i will uh, uh, modify a bit the text uh, here so i will publish in the by tomorrow the final version i will mark in, in red uh, the modifications so that you can spot them easily it will, that will be basically about uh, the um, the, the minimum number of questions so a survey is composed of a title of a, a list of at least one questions so there's no empty survey i will uh, try to remove the reference to the user uh, and uh, more simply talk about the answers that are given which uh, created some some confusion and uh, i will clarify that if you want uh, you may put a limit uh, about uh, the number of possible answers in a closed answer question okay uh, if you want you may put a limit uh, of 10 or more i think these are the three main uh, um, corrections that we need to do to the text yeah um, also remember to check the submission procedure okay because you saw that uh, we already on the big labs we already uh, gave zero point uh, points uh, to the people who didn't submit correctly the big lab okay it's not about one point more or one point less uh, i don't i really don't care about one point more or less and you shouldn't also but uh, uh, it's for you know, uh, giving you a, a, a first step in which you can try uh, to the submission procedure okay uh, so also especially the, the final tagging uh, of, of the project and um, pack.json that should contain everything and so on uh, if you do it wrong at the exam you will lose some points uh, in the exam itself okay uh, i will check uh, i will evaluate the, the exams that uh, uh, have the, all three requirements you should be enrolled in the official Portal della Didattica for the exam. You must have uh, accepted on GitHub Classroom and you must have pushed uh, with the final tag uh, before the deadline. Okay, all three conditions must be, must be met. Okay, if you don't, yeah, I will, I have some scripts uh, that download this data and only show me the list of projects that fulfill the, these three constraints, especially the final tag. Uh, okay, people are just uh, reading quickly and uh, committing with some name final or something like that no it's not the commit message it's a special tag which is a different concept in, in git we give you the instruction for doing that uh, so please uh, try to follow them okay um, okay Uh, about the the oral discussion uh, you know will come later after we publish uh, we, we submit and we correct uh, it will we will uh, publish the scores uh, and we'll publish some 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 slots in which you can you know enroll for doing the oral discussion uh, I see a lot of people uh, connected today and a lot of people who downloaded the text uh, so probably it will be a um, there will be a lot of people at, in, in this exam, so I'm not able to, to promise a quick uh, publication of this course, but we'll manage it. About the final tag, if we add the final tag, we cannot modify the submission anymore. Uh, so, uh, final is a strong word, okay? It means uh, final, okay? Uh, technically you could uh, remove a tag do some other com tags are unique okay so if you create a tag which is called in git that is called final you cannot tag with the same word final another commit what you could do is to remove the tag push the removal do new commits and then tag the new commits okay uh, the idea is that this final, uh, you do that at the last minute when everything is okay, 
uh, I don't know, one minute before midnight or whatever, and say, okay, this is the token that we use to say you want to submit it. Because there will be a lot of people who start working on the project, do some, some or many commits, uh, and we need to have a way to, to, to check whether you really want to submit it or not, or you just met, maybe abandoned or you didn't finish it or whatever. Uh, so this is a, is a token that we want uh, um, to check. We will check the timestamp of this uh, tagging so that nothing, you, you sh um, sh this should be before the deadline. And if by change you, you commit something after this deadline, it will not be considered. Okay, we will, uh, as you saw, we um, this is the, the, the code that I will execute on my computer in my scripts. Uh, uh, we, I will check out the final tag. So if you commit something, something after this tag, I will not see it. Okay. So if you do, uh, if you find some last minute uh, problem, uh, you, you should remove the tag, commit uh, the modification and add a new tag again, push it to the server before the deadline. How are the six points given? Uh, well, normally, if you are, if you show um, a good understanding of your project, uh, so I, I'm, I'm sure that you are familiar with the project. You know what uh, what you did. We will have some discussion. No? Basically, Magui said, uh, I will open the code and say, okay, what uh, what did you do at this point? Why did you make this choice? How, how would you do something differently? Something like that. Question of that of this type. So understanding about your code. If you if you if you know what you did and you know why you did it in this way, it would be no, no problem. So if you are familiar with your code, normally I will give five points. If uh, I see that you are extra familiar and quick and so you you understood very well and then we will, we will be six points if uh, you have some difficulties then i will go down but if i see that you have a lot of difficulties so basically you don't know what you did in your project then the whole exam is failed of course hmm? so you you should think that normally the score let's uh, also historically from last year is uh, you can count five points plus or minus one. So if you're really good in the, in the, in the discussion, you will get six points. Uh, if you have some you know, difficulty, you will find if you will get four. Less than four, I will get strong suspicion about uh, the, the, the validity of your, of your exam. So also when evaluating whether to take, take the oral exam or not, uh, take into account this uh, ballpark uh, figure, okay? Okay, so I don't see any new questions coming in for the moment, but of course uh, uh, you, you have to give me some time to collect uh, the, the good question and publishing the results and correcting the text. So before tomorrow, I will uh, share you the links uh, to the answers and to the um, to the updated project uh, assignment and uh, we keep this uh, channel alive uh, so even in the next days if you have uh, some questions we'll try to answer that hmm? okay so i think uh, we We've touched most of the points. It's not a complex project. Don't make it more complex than it is. So don't make your life more difficult. Okay. Uh, try to stick with the specification and uh, try to make a project which is nice and quick and easy to use. And uh, but uh, try to find uh, say good solutions about uh, and uh, and simple solution about the different problems if you can. Okay, by the way, somebody asked, uh, we will do a, a, a meeting like this also for the second uh, uh, exam, okay? 
so after the publication of the text they will also have a chat like this also and on every exam we will follow this procedure so that i think that spending this this hour together may help avoiding problems at the, the submission time during the exam or whatever okay so thank you again and uh, i'd like to see you all uh, in the beginning of july when we have the discussion so it will be the first time we can see face to face really or no, not really but at least face to face like we can see and hear you during the, the discussion uh, thank you and uh, good work bye bye